Assalamu alaikum guys, it's Shafiq. Assalamu alaikum, it's Ali. Alhamdulillah, we're up to episode 6, season 1. Yep. And today's topic is? Al-Um, mothers. And um, I guess we'll fo- we're more focusing on respect towards mothers, you know, the way we're supposed to treat them Islamically, you know. And how, st- how, um, how much, how strength they can provide you with and why they're so, not why, but how important they mean to you. <clears throat> and always, we like starting off with a hadith or an ayah from the Quran, so Ali, take it oh, away. Oh, alright, I'm going to start with, um, in, okay, your Lord has this decree that you shall, in the Quran, it says that your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that as long as one or both of them live, you shall not, never say to them, oof, or, or the slightest gesture of annoyance. Nor shall you shout with them, and you, or no, you, and you shall treat them with respect, and lower for them the wings of humility and kindness, and say, my Lord, have mercy on them, for they have raised me when I was young. You know, so, you know, when people, when, for example, when your mom told you to throw out the garbage or something, and you're like, oof, oof, you know, you suck your teeth, you just like that. You know, your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from all the heavens, he says not to do it. So, and you know, we all, we always hear this, you know, saying that, you know, Jannah is beneath your mother's feet, you know. Yeah, your mother can be your gateway to Jannah. And yeah. um, I know there's the, the saying, I'm not sure if it's hadith or not, but it, it says, uh, ummak, thumma ummak, thumma ummak. Qala abu kit. It's a hadith, by the way, from Nima, Rasul Salah, never mind, go ahead, go ahead. So, you know, your mother, mother, your mother, and then your father. So, like, your mother, you know, we all know the struggles that your mother goes through, you know, from giving birth to the day, you know, you're 30 years old and taking care of her, you know. SubhanAllah, you know, they put in a lot of work for us, you know, they teach us everything that we need to know in life. And, um... There's actually a, sh- you know what, you want to start with your story or you should I go to mine first? Uh, you know what, I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with mine. I'm going sh- to start with one story, then I'll go, then I'll give you another one. I'm going to show you uh, sh- a quick one. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, before uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before Isa Alayhi Wasallam. This is at the time of Musa Alayhi Wasallam, Moses, peace be upon him. Um, <clears throat> one time he, he spoke to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and he asked him, Oh Allah, who's going to be my companion? Jannah. And Allah says to him, a butcher. And he was shocked, he was like, a butcher? Really? Oh Allah, where can I find this guy? And then Allah said he's in so and so place. Go here, here, and then there. So he goes. He knocks on his door and he says, Oh, I'm a traveler. Do you mind if I stay over for the night? Because he wants to know why this man is so special. You know, we're gonna be in paradise with a prophet. Mashallah. And he's like, Yeah, why not? So he's he's um he stays with him a few days and then at night, you know, when he comes back from work, he sees him getting um extra stuff from, from where he works, he's a butcher. And then all of a sudden he sees a basket on top, um very on a high shelf. He takes the basket and he puts it on the ground. He sees him remove something from the basket, something very, very wrinkly and old. And um, it was a human being. And he takes her out and he puts her on his lap. And he, and he takes food from, um, from, he takes food from the boiling water, whatever, meat, chews it, takes it, and puts the food in her mouth. And every time, every time he noticed something, he noticed that every time before he could put the food or the morsel in her mouth, she would say something. So he said to him, um, Musa Ali Islam said to him, who is this to you? He said, she's my mother. And I'm too poor to uh, afford a khadim or a servant to help me out. And so I get whatever, everything I got leftovers from a butcher, and I cook it and I feed it to her. And he says, what does she say before she um, feeds, before she, before she puts or eats the food? And then he said, she prays for me. That oh, Allah make my son the companion of Musa in Jannah. Wow. So subhanAllah, that right there shows you the power of your mom in your du'a. So your mother, the du'a of your mother is so strong, so much stronger than yours. And um, the story that I was going to tell was, um, there was once a, a man who was on his deathbed and all the companions were surrounding him. And, you know, this man could not say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah before he died. So these companions were getting worried. So they called the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he was like, all right, what's going on? You know, what's wrong with him? And they're like, we don't know. He can't say it. And he was like, okay, first thing, let me go to his mother. So they go to the mother and they ask her, you know, was your son a good kid? You know, did he do everything that he was supposed to do? She's like, yeah, he was a great Muslim. You know, he did everything that he was supposed to do. And he was like, all right, but did he do anything wrong? She was like, you know, there was once an incident where, you know, we were eating at the table and he gave his wife food before he gave me. You know, he pretty much served food to his wife before he served his mother. And she was like, you know, I didn't forgive him for that. I couldn't forgive him for that. You know, he disappointed me. So... Exactly, she, it hurt her, and the Prophet was like, you know, if you don't forgive him, you know, we can't do anything, he's not going to be able to say it, you know, and she was like, no, I can't forgive him, so he was like, okay, he told the companions, we're going to take him, we're going to throw him in fire, we're going to burn him, and you know, just to scare the mother, you know, the mother's going to see her son burn, that, you know, Islamic-wise, you know, that shouldn't even be happening in the first place, so she's like, oh my God, they're going to burn my son, she was like, all right, wait, 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 I forgive my son for 
whatever he did to me, he doesn't deserve to die that way, I forgive him. <clears throat> So at that moment, after she forgave him, he was able to say, Shadu an ilaha illallah, Shadu an Muhammad Rasulullah, and he died right there. Beautiful way to die. I was going to say another one where um, <coughs> uh, a scholar, Radul Anu, um, uh, after the time of the Sahaba, uh, he saw a Yemeni guy, he said he saw a Yemeni guy. Um, he said he, Hamal uh, Umur Warad Aru, he had his mother on his back. And um, he was circumambulating in the cabin. You know, he was in the Kitafa around the cabin. And then he, w he went up to the scholar, I forgot the scholar's name. Um, I love you, but he said, um, uh, I, uh, scholar, I forgot his name. He said, I carried, I carried my mother on my, on my back longer than she had been carrying me in her room, in her wombs, any more than, longer than nine months. <clears throat> and I did everything that um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to do, you know, in pilgrimage to Mecca and Medina, blah, blah, And then he said, have I um, given her back her haq? Have I given her back her right? Everything as, she owes you. As everything I owe her, as her being my mother and her giving birth to me? He said, la, he said, la. he said, no, you haven't even given the right that, no, you haven't even completed one breath or one tear that she took when she gave breath, uh, gave birth to. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Um, I, that's the lesson for today, guys. I hope you guys learned something. Make sure in this blessed month of Ramadan. Oh, matter of fact, I have a quote one. Do you mind? Sure. Go ahead. No. Um, <clears throat> at the time of Rasul um, when they were fighting, you know, there was, um, at the time of war, they were fighting. Um, the, at the time of the Jahalaya, they were fighting the um, Kuffar. So while they were fighting, there was a man that they had a problem with. He killed like over 12, 13 Muslims. And he was on the killing spree and he was so strong and everything. And it was hard for them to... to they, yeah, he was, it was a big problem. So they finally killed him and everything. And then after the war, the battle ended. Not the war, I'm sorry. The battle ended. They went to Rasulullah. He said, Ya Rasulullah, how come this man was so difficult? How come Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave fear? He put fear upon everybody's heart except for his. He, and he actually... And he, he didn't take away his strength. He gave... Well, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called, he said, he said, um, because he was good to his mother. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. I'm just saying. So, I think, now yeah, we're, we're officially good. done. We're officially uh, good. Thanks for a lot for watching, guys. Yeah. Keep hope, tuning in to more of our videos. I hope you learned a few things, you know. A uh, really important topic, guys. Treat your mother well. Treat her with the respect that she rightfully deserves. She is your gateway to Jannah. Yeah, she is. And um, that's it for today. Keep tuning in. Keep watching. Watch, share, spread the knowledge. One more thing. Haga, uh, mom, if you're watching this, I love you. Love you too, Ma. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum, guys.